We've said a function is continuous at C if the limit as X approaches C of the function is just F of C, which intuitively just means there's no hole or jump or asymptote at C. The graph just continues in a smooth and in a continuous way there. Now, if this is true everywhere on the function, if for all values where the function is defined, there are no holes, there are no gaps, there are no asympt vertical asymptotes to worry about, then we will say that the function f is a continuous function. The function is continuous everywhere it's defined if this condition is held for all c, for all c where the function is defined. So, for example, we've already said that we know polynomials are continuous everywhere. A polynomial is an example of a continuous function. You, you can draw your polynomial without making any jumps, without having to pick up your pencil. Similarly, you might think of some other functions that are continuous. How about the trig functions? Well, certainly for things like sine of x and cosine of x, this is true, you can draw sine of x or cosine of x without having any jumps or any holes. But it won't be true for things like tangent or secant or cosecant or cotangent because those have vertical asymptotes you have to worry about. What are some other examples of continuous functions? Well, when you have a rational function, p of x over q of x, so when you have some rational function, some polynomial divided by some other polynomial that will be continuous as long as you're not dividing by zero. So if the bottom is not zero, so wherever the bottom is not equal to zero, you're continuous there. If you have something on the bottom that's never zero, then you're continuous everywhere. And another example would be things like the exponential function, e to the x. Maybe you recall the graph of that is just a nice exponential curve. There's no holes, there's no gaps, there's no jumps in it. Or things like the square root function. If you have something like the square root of x, well, it's not defined for negative numbers, but wherever it is defined for all the positive numbers, that is continuous. So this is continuous where it's defined. Similarly for cube root, well, that would be defined everywhere, or fourth root, or fifth root, and so on. So I'll just put nth roots wherever they're defined. Okay, so there are quite a few examples of, of various kinds of examples that are uh, of functions that are continuous everywhere. And those are really nice because it says if, if you want to take some limit of one of these kinds of functions, the limit is just going to come out to be what you get by plugging c in. The limit as x goes to 5 of e to the x is just e to the 5, for example. But we can say something a little bit stronger. It's not just that these functions by themselves are continuous, but when you start combining these functions, they're still continuous. So, so here are some properties. If, if you have two functions, if f and g are both continuous functions, then other things like f plus g will still be continuous. Why? Well, if there were no holes or no jumps, you can think that when you combine them, you're not going to introduce any holes, you're not going to introduce any jumps. There won't be any discontinuities that suddenly appear. Same for f minus g. Or for some kind of constant times f. If f is continuous, then 2 times f is continuous, or, or half of f is continuous. Or f times g. Or f divided by g as long as, as long as this bottom is not zero, as long as the g is non-zero. So combining continuous functions spits out functions that are continuous as well. Uh, one more way you can combine functions, you can take a composition of two functions. You, you do the function g and then you plug it into the function f, f composed of g, that will still be continuous as well. So let's look at an example of, of how this plays out in, in action. Let's consider a function like the function h of x is equal to e to the square root of x all over x minus 2. 
And what I want you to notice is this is a combination of these functions we've talked about. It's a composition of e to the x with the square root of x. And then that is being divided by a, a polynomial x minus 2. And so we can begin to, just by looking at this function, see where it's continuous. Well, first of all, we know that division will only result in something continuous if the bottom is non-zero. So this will only be continuous when the bottom is non-zero, so x can't be equal to 2. Also, this is only going to be continuous where it's defined. We said square roots and fifth roots and, and whatever root you're looking at, eighth roots, are only continuous where they're defined. So a square root of x will only be continuous when my x is, is defined to be some positive value. And so what do you end up with? We end up with it's continuous on the interval from 0 up until 2, and then from 2 off to infinity. At all those values, it is continuous. So if you saw a problem like what is the limit as x approaches 5 of e to the square root of x all over x minus 2, you can think, well, there's nothing bad happening at 5. The bottom is well defined. The square root of 5 is well defined. E to the is, is, uh, e is a nice continuous function. Exponential is a nice continuous function. And so this is just a composition of continuous functions where everything is well defined. And so this will just be what I get from plugging in 5. That's what this definition is telling me. I can just plug in here because it's a continuous function. So this just comes out to be e to the square root of 5 all over 5 minus 2, which is 3.